and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Lauren Nelson. And I'm Dino Lolly. Today we're coming to you from the Mother Road Monument in El Reno. Located right along Route 66, this is the perfect spot for you to get out, stretch your legs, and snap a few selfies of your trip along the Mother Road. El Reno business premier craft designed this monument for the city in 2018. It's a great stopping point, and it's located right near the iconic Sid's Diner. We'll take a look around throughout the show. But first, we're going to head east from here to one of the most historic sites in the state. Honey Springs Battlefield in Shakota is the site of the largest Civil War battle in our area. Jason Grubbs takes us there. July 17, 1863. 9,000 men are fighting the Civil War just south of Muskogee. Out of 107 documented conflicts, the Battle of Honey Springs is the largest during the war, a major turning point in history. The absolute most pivotal battle which led to uh, federal control of most of Indian Territory for the remainder of the Civil War took place just two weeks after Union victories in the east at Gettysburg and the west at Vicksburg. Adam Lynn is the director for the Battlefield and Visitor Center. He says the Union's success at Honey Springs led to the formation of Oklahoma. You can learn all about that and more here at the state-of-the-art facility through some recently updated exhibits detailing the history. Not only of the Battle of Honey Springs, but the Civil War in Indian Territory, the importance of the Texas Road, which you can see on trail number three, the remnants of. Over the years, hundreds of items have been found actually on the battlefield. Some of those items you can actually see in this room. Behind me, some ammunition and equipment for horses. In the uh, 1990s, there were archeological uh, digs. We have uh, about a thousand or so plus artifacts that were found. Honey Springs was a Confederate depot stationed with 6,000 troops. While General Douglas H. Cooper waited on a 3,000-man reinforcement from Fort Smith, Union General James G. Blunt was at Fort Gibson with 3,000 men of his own. So he decided that he would hit them before he had a chance to hit him. He ordered the night march starting on July 15th, 1863. They crossed the Arkansas River on flatboats. A handful of troops did pass away and they had a small skirmish at Chimney Mountain just northwest of here before they met at what is now the northern portion of our battlefield. The battlefield itself is about five miles long and 1,100 acres. There's six walking trails and over 50 interpretive signs. Visitors are welcome to call in advance and uh, book a tour. It's estimated that 200 to 300 soldiers died here, and not just white men. This is thought to be, if not the, one of the most culturally diverse conflicts to ever take place in the entire Civil War. The Union Army's first black regiment fought here, as well as Indians from Oklahoma's five tribes, who were on both sides of the conflict. A few years after the war, the bodies of Union soldiers were exhumed and reburied in national cemeteries. Those who died fighting for the Confederacy are still here. There are approximately 140 Confederate soldiers that passed away. General Blunt had buried in one or more graves on the battlefield, which had yet to be found. In the end, the Union overtook the Confederate at Honey Springs. Various reasons led to the success, among them a summer rain that left the Southerners' gunpowder too wet to fire. Lynn hopes visitors come away with a better understanding of what happened here whether it's through the exhibits, monthly programs, or research center. Anybody who would like to research more about the Civil War, uh, more about their family's involvement in the Civil War, we certainly uh, encourage those people to come out and do so. At the Honey Springs Battlefield and Visitor Center, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. Tours of the Honey Springs Battlefield can be arranged year-round. You can visit on your own anytime Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right, now if you head south from Shakota, you'll come across another piece of incredible Oklahoma history. The Choctaw Cultural Center opened this year, and it's full of tribal history and cultural stories. Tina McGarry takes us to Calera, that's near Durant, to experience it. What the Cultural Center offers is a truly authentic experience, and I think that a truly Choctaw experience is what um, when you come, you'll see, you'll smell, you'll taste. The Choctaw Cultural Center is wonderfully immersive with walkthrough exhibits and hands-on activities telling the story of Choctaw life. It's amazing. It's, it's a must-see. You don't realize what it is until you actually start through it. Everybody has just kind of fallen in love with it and said how authentic it feels, how cultural it feels, like they, they leave here really understanding more about Choctaw culture. Visitors walk through 15,000 years or 600 Choctaw generations of history through modern day. 
people have been in tears and said this is really important to see these stories being told and they're proud that their family and their culture is being represented in the cultural center. Choctaw people today draw strength from the land. It's just so interactive here. I did not expect everything to be so personable so you could really get hands-on experience on your learning. I live in the area. I've been involved in the Durant community for a very long time and I have friends that I've grown up with who are Choctaw and I really wanted to really understand what their culture is. Oh, my favorite thing today was actually where we're at now. I really like how it looks in here. It's just astounding to see how like natural and how spot on everything is. Our exhibitions feature objects that were made by Choctaw people and the life cast themselves are modeled after Choctaw people um, in the community. Visitors can also stop by the gift store, which features beautiful work by Choctaw artists and a variety of unique souvenirs. When you come, bring your appetite. A cozy cafe offers delicious food and drink. We have a restaurant or cafe called Champoli, and um, it features of what you would think of as traditional native. Uh, we've got Indian tacos. We also have um, some Choctaw dishes like manaha, um, salt pork, uh, some really fun things to try. We have good desserts, grape dumplings. Everybody loves grape dumplings for dessert. Um, so Champoli is really lovely, a cafe. The Choctaw Cultural Center welcomes guests of all ages. Closed Mondays and Tuesdays, open Wednesday through Sunday. I think the strength and beauty of this facility reflects that Choctaw spirit and that rich culture. In Calera, I'm Tina McGarry, Discovering Oklahoma. The Choctaw Cultural Center is located just off of Highway 75 on Hina Hanta Way. They're open Wednesday through Sunday, closed Monday and Tuesday. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. It makes them curious and it makes enough weirdness that it makes them want to slow down and look over and see what we are. The roadside attraction that everyone on Route 66 will want to take in. We have a chimichanga that's probably the biggest chimichanga in Oklahoma. Plus Mexican food that will make your mouth water. It's a very unique place with um, stories. The longer you linger, the more you kind of can pull from it. And the unique hotel where you just have to stop and stay. It's all coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. Imagine limitless possibilities with the Oklahoma Travel Guide. Imagine world-class wonderlands, road trips that inspire. Imagine date night elevated. Order your free guide at TravelOK.com. Imagine that. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the El Reno Mother Road Monument, a tribute to Route 66 here in Oklahoma. One of the many things I love about Route 66 is as you travel along it, you will always find all sorts of shops and roadside attractions. Antique stores are a favorite of most road trippers, and Deanne Stein is taking us to one on old Route 66, this one in Bethany. Geographically, Eden Antique Emporium is located away from the clusters of other shops on historic Route 66 in Bethany. So they've pulled out all the stops to get people to stop. We get um, a lot of people who drive by who've seen us here for five years, seen the lights, seen the Eiffel Tower on the side of the building and the, the bulb lights on the patio. And they say they've been meaning to stop by, but they never have. They've even added Clarice and Bodie to help entice drivers to visit. It makes them curious and it makes enough weirdness that it makes them want to slow down and look over and see what we are. But all the weirdness outside is just a sample of what awaits you inside Brenda Six's store. You can kind of look around and see it's odd and unusual items. It's not your normal um, things. She has thousands of items for sale from dealer booths, items on consignment, estate pieces, and store-owned collections. I've had several people say that they didn't know they would like shopping like this. From hardcore collectors to just browsers, Brenda gets a diverse group of shoppers and can accommodate any budget. People love to find things that my grandma had one of these. You know, this was in my house when I was little. My aunt had one of these. Those are the things that, the things that touch their hearts, you know? And um, that's why keeping things authentic is a big deal to me. Brenda is very specific on what she wants inside the store. It has to be very rare and really old, but mostly unusual and weird. 
from a lifetime of it, um, I think I can pretty well spot what's really weird and unusual, and there's not a hundred more of them within five miles. And she has every nook and cranny filled with displays of her finds. Even a trip to the bathroom gives you another opportunity to shop. What I like most about it is researching the individual history of the individual items. Uh, for me personally, my collections are items that all have a past. You know, some, something that uh, ties it to the people of the past. Like this cabinet with two heads carved on top. The more authentic, the better. We have some furniture that is beautiful in its original finish. Um, the way the artisans did it at the time, that's a big deal to me. Follow the feet to the back of the store for even more dealer gems. The people who drive here specifically are true shoppers. They're looking for things that are over 50 years old, definitely, and they prefer things over 100 years old. And if you're just traveling Route 66, Brenda has a souvenir section for you. But when it comes to hunting for treasures, Brenda is ready to sell you a piece of history. In Bethany, I'm Deanne Stein for Discover Oklahoma. You will find the Bethany Antique Mall at 3909 North College. They're open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, closed on Sundays. All that shopping can make you work up an appetite. So if you are up for hopping off of the Mother Road for just a bit, we have a suggestion for you. Come with me now to Chad's El Sabora's in Medicine Park. If you find yourself driving down State Highway 49 in Southwest Oklahoma, you'll cut right through the picturesque town of Medicine Park. You'll also find yourself a great place to eat, Chad's El Sabora's Mexican Restaurant. I think what we're doing is putting a little bit of a different twist on some of the food is how we're doing it. And it's just enough to just to say, hey, you know, this is a really good place and we're really enjoying this. Chad's was born from a friendship between Chad and Charlie Brown, owner of the building, who passed away just before the restaurant opened to the public. Uh, as Charlie and I became uh, closer friends and things, we'd sit on the patio, hang out, you know, friends, his friends, my friends. He just kept talking about this restaurant and I said, I'm going to do a Mexican restaurant. And we really just joked about it and he said, okay, yeah, go ahead. Chad is a sergeant in the Medicine Park Police Department and loves the community he serves. He wanted to fill a space that was lacking as far as food offerings in this area. We have hamburger steaks uh, out here. Everybody's got their niche. Everybody, the other restaurants up here do an amazing job. And I just thought, okay, let's, let's do an, a Mexican restaurant. El Sabores means the flavor in Spanish. And here at Chad's, you'll find delicious, unique twists on all your favorite Mexican flavors. We really just wanted to be different on the style of food that we were putting in. We have the Big Rock Brera Tacos. Uh, that is one of our top sellers here. We have the pork enchiladas. We have a chimichanga that's probably the biggest chimichanga in Oklahoma. I may be wrong, but it's, it's an amazing chimichanga. We make our own salsas, we make our own quesos. Everything up here is just made out of that kitchen. If you're in the area on the weekend, you can enjoy brunch at Chad's. So the brunch menu obviously is uh, enchiladas as well, uh, chorizo and egg enchiladas, uh, chorizo and egg uh, tacos. Uh, we have the classic, which is we have the classic with bacon, the classic with steak, which is just your Texas toast, eggs, bacon, or your uh, Texas toast, eggs, so and steak. Do. Chad's has a loyal base of customers, and everyone we talked to gave rave reviews. Oh, I'm here at least three or four or five times a week. I love the tamales, they are so awesome. I love the I love the taco, the enchilada taco. Taco salad, yeah, that's good too. These are the street tacos and they're awesome too. I just had the uh, chimichanga for lunch and it was awesome. Um, fajitas are very good. Everywhere you look in Medicine Park, there's beautiful scenery. Combine the gorgeous views of this mountain town with the delicious Mexican food at Chad's El Sabora's Mexican restaurant, and it can't be beat. You will get this. You will get the history. You will get some uh, just all around a, a different experience around uh, this area. Well, it's a beautiful place, and you can look out and see the over Medicine Park, and it's awesome. And the people are nice, and the food's great. And the drinks are awesome, too. <laughs> Chad's is located at 18493 Highway 49 in Medicine Park. They're open Tuesday through Sunday and closed on Mondays. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. Aesthetically, it's very vibrant and um, shocking in a way. A beautiful overnight stay at a boutique hotel. 
It's amazing. It always has been. And wait until you see what they're talking about in Tulsa, coming up when Discover Oklahoma continues. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you today from along Route 66 in El Reno. No matter which direction you're traveling on the Mother Road, you're going to head through Oklahoma City. It's just one spot that you really owe it to yourself to stop and spend the night. And Quinn Tran has an idea for you. How about the Bradford House? The Bradford House stands grand at the corner of Northwest 38th and Classen. Once inside, it's hard to believe this boutique hotel was built in 1912. I always describe it as being as in original condition, but not in a good way. Like, in, if you just let something go for a hundred years, like that's what you would, that's what you could imagine it looked like. Sarah Kate and Jason Little bought the property in 2016. She's an interior designer. He's in commercial real estate. The couple put their talents together to renovate the historic home built by William Bradford, Oklahoma County's first clerk. Back then, the property housed luxury apartments along the streetcar route. This building is just about the only thing you can see on the horizon, so it would, this would have been built really early on in this phase of development for this part of the city being three miles north of downtown would have been you know, pr pretty far out at the time. While restoring the home, the Littles kept as much of the original woodwork and fixtures. After five years and the birth of three children, they completed the renovations. The results are stunning. Aesthetically, it's very vibrant and um, shocking in a way, I think, to a lot of people, which is really fun um, for me personally um, to see people's reaction to the colors and the textures and the collections that linger kind of in every room that each have a story. Um, I mean, the penguin books in this room came box by box from England. The longer you linger, the more you kind of can pull from it. The Bradford House offers 36 guest rooms, a dozen in the historic home. The rest are in a brand new contemporary addition. The modern guest house building, it's all open air in the front, so there's no interior, no like central corridors. And then every room has views out onto and access out onto that landscaped courtyard in the center. The Bradford House offers visitors a complete stay, explore beautiful rooms, and taste delicious French-American meals made from scratch. We have a, a chicken curry croquettes, so it's like a little um, like fritter basically, um, and so those are a huge favorite. Uh, our pasta is house-made. We make it all by hand and roll it by hand. All of the food is, is great in my opinion, so. <laughs> people see new life for this historic place. Just seeing it uh, through the years, right? It was a house, but now they revitalize it. Really awesome to see. It's so welcoming here and the service is always great. Whether it's the service, the space, or a stay, the Bradford House offers an experience. I think we're all looking for an experience. We're all looking um, for excitement and something that feels fresh and different. And so if Bradford House can be a backdrop for that, um, we're, we're very happy. In Oklahoma City, Quintran, Discover Oklahoma. Bradford House is located at 1235 Northwest 38th Street in Oklahoma City. You can take a look around and book your room on their website, bradfordhouseokc.com. Up next on Discover Oklahoma, we make everything the same way, by hand, using local ingredients when we can. Home cooking that's been bringing folks to this Tulsa spot for years. We'll take you there next on Discover Oklahoma. Why order a free Oklahoma outdoor guide? Uncover unique wonders. Cultivate your curiosity. And wake up your wild side. Order or download your free copy today. We've had a great time today here at our little pit stop in El Reno. And now we're going to get back on Route 66, head northeast to Tulsa, and I bet you we can stop for lunch. Right now, though, Jason Scrubs is going to tell us all about Queenie's. Queenie's in Utica Square. New location, same great food. It's amazing. It always has been. Queenie's has been in Tulsa since 1983. Fans are near and far. We're not from Tulsa, so when we drive into town, we like to come to Queenie's. 
Lois Cutberth has been coming here for years, driving in from Cushing to visit her daughter. Today's order, the grilled ham and cheese along with the chicken salad sandwich. Lunch and desserts from Queenie's are a must. Because everything is fresh and everything is just like you want it. Yeah, tastes really good and the service is wonderful. Ruth Young started the cafe and bakery in Brookside, then moved to Utica in 1985, where it would stay in the same spot for about 35 years, until now. The uh, move was something that Ruth and Utica Square and our manager Heather had been working on for a couple of years before Ruth decided to deliver, <laughs> you know, deliver that project to somebody else. When it came time to retire, Ruth turned to an old friend and former employee from the 90s, Brian Hughes. I was a busboy, a waiter, a manager, worked in the kitchen for Ruth, did her books even for a couple of years. There may be a new location, but the menu is the same with a few additions. You've got something that's an institution. It's probably as much owned by the people who have been coming here forever as it would ever be by me. So. Keep those things that are there and wonderful, there and wonderful. There's now an espresso machine and adult beverages. Those were two things that I thought might be fun to add to the mix. A couple of longtime weekly specials are now offered every day. The tuna salad and lentil burger. Aside from that, it's the same great food and desserts made fresh daily, many of which are original family recipes. We make everything the same way, by hand, using local ingredients when we can. And those desserts are made fresh every day with real ingredients. Just take a look at those chocolate chip cookies. That's right. Every single day, everything made from scratch. You know, I can't say good things enough about Queenie's. They've done a great job, and especially with the new location, it's just gotten better and better. Kurt Dodd eats here almost every day, and he's tried almost everything on the menu. I love all the sandwiches, but the chicken salad is a favorite. Uh, if you're interested in breakfast, huevos rancheros, or they usually have a scramble, or they'll have peach pancakes, which are the best. <laughs> I don't want to sound like I consume everything, but I mean, the food is great. Brian says the food isn't the only thing that makes Queenie's great. It's the people, both customers and employees. There are a lot of people involved, all with their hearts in the right place and, and working hard to make this happen. And it doesn't happen by accident. It happens with a lot of hard work and dedication and positivity of 45 people who are part of Queenie's. In Tulsa's Utica Square, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. You'll find Queenie's at 1816 Utica Square. You can also place your order for pickup online. No matter where your next road trip takes you, the Discover Oklahoma Dining Guide will help you find a great place to eat. Just log on to our website, travelok.com, and click Request Free Brochures to get your copy. A big thank you to the fine folks here in El Reno for hosting us this week. If you want to head out to take a few Route 66 selfies, you'll find this monument at Wade and Choctaw Streets in El Reno. It's open to the public sunrise to sunset every day, and there's no cost to stop off and stretch your legs. Coming up next week on Discover Oklahoma, we're headed to Northwest Oklahoma for a night or two at Boiling Springs State Park. And forget dinner, this is dessert worth the drive. While you'll wanna get in the car and feed your sweet tooth at this hot spot. That's next week right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma.